You know, so many foreigners, when they move to Taiwan, want to open up a business, but so few of them actually do because of just how difficult it is. But not, not for my friend Amy. She's my friend here in Taiwan, and she's got a few restaurants here in Taipei, actually, which is where I'm staying. That's why I have this fancy hotel. And she's invited me to the opening party of her restaurant in Xingyi District, which is why I'm wearing these fancy clothes. And so of course, when she asked me to join her party, of course I said yes. I also just realized this is an espresso machine and I just poured myself a full cup of it. See, I think that Amy is just one of those foreigners here in Taiwan that I've met that I just have like so much respect for. She's done so much here. I mean, she's married to a Taiwanese guy. She runs a couple of restaurants in Taipei, one of like a personal dream of mine. So I'm almost jealous of her. She speaks Chinese and I don't know. I just think it's pretty amazing that she was able to do that. So I thought I, today, we would go to her party. I'll take you guys along with me. And I'm gonna ask her a bunch of questions, figure out how she was even able to do all that because I think it's a pretty good story to tell. Amy's story is one worth telling. She's pretty amazing. How do I look? I'm not really good at dressing myself. I had to go on Pinterest and figure out like what colors to put together because I'm useless at this kind of thing. <laughs> God, wow, it's you. Thanks. Nice to finally nice meet, to you. meet you. How are you? This is Christina's headless body, by the way. She's another YouTuber here in Taiwan. She's pretty great. You should check her out. Her, uh, hello. Hello. Hi, you look great. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're famous for milkshakes. So, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> No, of course. I was looking forward to it since you were invited. I'm so happy to see you too. This is great. Hi. I didn't know you were. Hi. How's it going? So, Amy. You run a restaurant, a business right. here in Taiwan. Right. right. How long have you been doing that for? So I've been doing it for like 13 years, I think now. I just didn't want to work for other people anymore. I just wanted to do something by myself. My husband felt the same, so we just decided to open a night market stall in Gongguan. Because I think it's amazing. My favorite thing oh, about your restaurant you. is like the atmosphere. I think it's great that you give Taiwanese people like um, English experience, you thank know? You I mean, so obviously much. the food's amazing too. Scotch egg is incredible here. Thank you. But I think like the fact that you've given them like a little England is really nice. I really appreciate that, thank you. So when, I, when I first came to Taiwan, I think I told people that I was a, a chef in the UK and the first thing they would say was, well, what does the UK have? It's just fish and chips, it's some healthy food. So I kind of wanted to bring like the food my mum would cook and things like that to Taiwan. And uh, mm -hmm. I just really thank Taiwanese people for accepting it and uh, for trying it as well. What inspired you to run a restaurant in Taiwan? So um, I think so from being a kid, I always knew that I wanted to work with food. So when I, uh, I became a chef and then when I came to Taiwan, the first year I taught English um, and I realized it just wasn't for me it was just I, as much as I loved it I just felt there was something inside me that I wasn't wasn't fulfilling and I think it's really important to follow your passion um, and I um, spoke to my husband one night and he's actually done business before so I'm not very business minded um, so he was good at that part and I did the creativity so we decided to, to open a restaurant and uh, because it was quite a big gamble at the time because Taiwanese people didn't know what British food was we started on a night market stall and just built our way up we didn't want to throw all the money in quickly and then mm -hmm. just be a failure you know so that's how it started did you have to adapt your um, cuisine to suit Taiwanese tastes I did actually uh, for the first few years I find it was really hard for me because the British people like really really salty and really really sweet it's quite strong flavor I had so many desserts like the people would eat half of them and send them back and just say oh it's too sweet or the food was too salty and, it, and not my confidence honestly for the first few years I thought oh my gosh if I kind of lost it am I is my food rubbish you know and then I just realized wait it's totally different. It's like in the UK, probably the Asian food is a stronger taste and we've like catered to the British cuisine. Um, so yeah, I do. And I found sometimes the things that went well in the UK, like uh, desserts and things, Taiwanese really hate them um, and vice versa. So I, yeah, it was, uh, it's been quite a, a big journey, I think, of taste and things like that. Right, like you got to make the food worse. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> What challenges did you face as a foreigner establishing a restaurant in Taiwan? I think it was about the staff actually, um, because I think in Taiwan you've got to be quite uh, blunt. So if I said to some of my staff in the UK, like, um, 
oh, yeah, that's that's okay. It could be better. They'd, they'd be like, oh my god, it's terrible. They kind of got my drift. You don't have to be horrible. Right. In Taiwan, if I said to my staff, oh yeah, that's okay. It could, you know, they'd be like, oh yeah, it's okay. You know, they just you had to be, I had to be very. Uh, I think it was just a real culture difference. I had to speak to them differently, more directly. Are the neighbors cool? Like businesses next to you are cool with you, or are they kind of like? They, they're quite. We've been really lucky. We did have some run-ins at our other store actually, because obviously we have fried, we got fried things, and then the smell things like that. Uh, but you I just sent some people over there. And yeah, tell them. yeah. <laughs> I'll show you a British experience. Yeah, exactly. Do you want some? I'll give it you. <laughs> you want me? Them again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think each other. You just got to respect and you know take. Just I think that's it. We just we just kind. We just kind of spoke it through and stuff. And so actually, we've been really lucky. We haven't met any like trouble, have any trouble or anything like that. So this one's tough because you run a British restaurant. But are there any like Taiwanese dining customs or traditions that you've? Kind of embraced in your restaurant. In the UK, we'd just have like one. We'd have like the soup, and then it'd be the salad, and then it would just come one by one. Mm -hmm. In Taiwan, it seems they still kind of prefer. They're okay with. We give them the soup, and then we put the salad on the table, then the starter all together. And that's kind of people always say to us, "Can you bring it all out together?" Is I think in the right. UK we'd eat one, and yeah, just take it away, and it'd be rude to like. Um, it's so ridiculous to yeah. us to have like like if me and you were out having dinner, and right. your pasta came like. Ten minutes before my—that is unacceptable. Exactly, like, that's it as well. Yeah, it's, it is unacceptable. Like, and also the food's got to come out all together. Like yes. the main course is right. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, and for if, us. If not, you just think that's like really. I think in the kitchens as well because you'd always when when you got to send the food out, you got to like really be good with the timing. And here it's so a lot easier because you just think, okay, when the fish is done, just send it out. When the yeah. pasta's done, just send it out. It's not that pressure. So in, it's in a, in a good way. I like that. And also, I find personally when I go to a restaurant as well, like you have to wait for all the people to finish their dinner before. Mm -hmm. You'd stop taking the plates away. It's kind of like a, we'd always do that. It would be rude. But in Taiwan, as soon as you finished, people would just take the plate away, or the people would be eating. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a cultural difference. I'm used to it now, but I think for a start, it was kind of um, yeah, just different culture. I think yeah. What's some of the most popular dishes among customers here? So the customers like our scones. They really mm -hmm. like the scones. Those are really good. Yeah, I just had you. one. And they like the trifle as well. We got the the trifle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, they also like fish and chips. Um, and the cottage pie goes really well as well. Oh, that's good. I had yeah. that the last time. Yeah, I did you? Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. So I was a little bit worried about that. Cause it's quite salty, but uh, people seem to seem to like it. Have you introduced any like unique twists or fusions to your dishes that kind of reflect both? English and Taiwanese culture. Do you keep it like pretty British? Yeah, so keep quite British. I think recently I've been trying to like incorporate more and more like Taiwanese. The our new dessert, I've like decided to put like Taiwanese fruit and like because I think Taiwanese fruit is really really good. So we've been like trying mm. to put more and more Taiwanese fruit in things. Um, so I'd like to go down that road. I think just adding more and more like fusion cuisine because I'm really passionate about like doing that I think this, there's so diff such different cultures. Yeah, yeah, I think that's smart, especially with the fruit because it's like yeah. I'm from Canada, you're from England. We get like. A lot of different kinds of apples. Yay! You know what I mean? Apples like, from raspberries, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blueberries, right. that kind of thing. So like mango and things like that in the UK. You oh, know, yeah. You get it, but it would be it would taste like powder. It's crap. You know? I don't yeah. even ever remember growing up eating mango or yeah, papaya. I don't think I've ever had it. as well. That was like a... You might see yeah. it every now and then, but it was expensive and it tasted really not very nice, right? So in Taiwan, I think, yeah, the fruit is just awesome. So I'd like to put more and more Taiwanese like local produce. So what mm. I'm trying to do now is find local farmers and like just go... I think I'm going to put some like taro on the menu. I'm going to a farm oh, next smart. week. smart, yeah. And then just... Because I think as well that just local produce is the best as well. And Taiwan's got so much to offer. So I hope to incorporate more of those things into our menu. Nice. Well, that's all my questions. Thank you so much, Prozzy. Yeah. Thank you. They're really good questions. And make sure you guys come and check out Brit Shake. She has uh, a location in Danshui as well. Right. We're here. What's this location? This is Xingyi. Xingyi yeah. District. This is Xingyi. Yeah. So come for the great atmosphere and the good food. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prozzy. No, thank nice you. To this see is you. great. Yeah, good to see you too. You. Thank you. This is fun.